Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Boys and girls, what would you do if a king cobra got out of its cage and escaped and you were responsible? How would you go about capturing this deadly reptile, a bite from whose fangs mean sure death, more deadly than the fur de lance or the bushmaster of South America? A king cobra has enough poison in one injection of venom to kill 500 men. Listen for the story as Bill and his rangers go looking for 12 feet of danger. Our story opens as Paul Pearson, young son of Thad Pearson, director of the Logan County Zoological Gardens, amuses himself by playing idly with a baby boa constrictor. He watches fascinated as the writhing creature slithers across the floor of the snake house. Just as the door opens, George Hill, a longtime head keeper of the zoo, enters. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, George. I see you're playing with the baby boy again. You'd better be careful, son. That's, that fellow's going to gain strength pretty fast in the next couple of months. I'll watch him. If I feel he's getting too strong for me, I'll quit playing with him. Well, I don't like you to play with snakes at all. Someday you might make a mistake, and it would be too late. Oh, I'll be all right. Besides, Dad says it's all right as long as I don't go near the dangerous ones. I know what your dad said. But you know how I got this crippled left hand of mine? Sure. You got it from snake bites. Four of them. That's right. It's only by the Lord's power that I ever pulled through. Now you go on, Paul. I've got to feed those killers today, and I don't want you here when I open the cages up. All right, George, but I'd like to help feed them if you let me. When you get a little older, son, I can't take any chances now. I'll be too late after you got bit. Hello there, son. Back so soon from the snake house? Yeah, Dad. What's the matter, Paul? You're acting rather down in the mouth. Oh, nothing. George says that baby boy is going to be too strong for me to play with pretty soon. That's right, Paul. Is that what's bothering you? No, not exactly. Uh-huh. Something is bothering you, son. Come on, out with it. Oh, it's nothing, really. Honest. Oh, come on now, Paul. We've, had, we've talked over lots of problems before and ironed them out, haven't we? Uh, let's forget it, huh, Dad? I don't want to complain. It's nothing, really. Mm-hmm, I see. Well, the first opportunity I have, I'll talk to George about letting you in the snake house. How'd you know, Dad? <laughs> oh, just a dad's understanding, I guess. I was a boy once, you know. Yeah. Well, thanks. Just one thing, Paul. Yeah? Remember, George has big responsibilities. And he takes pride in seeing that they're well taken care of. Stay away from the poisonous snakes. They're dangerous. Morning, George. Good morning. Got to clean this cage out. If this monkey would stay away from the broom. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there, Pedro. How's the chief snake keeper's helper this morning? <laughs> He's a lot of help. All he does is run off at the mouth and eat bananas <laughs> and get into monkey business like most monkeys do, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's what monkeys are made for. Hey, Pedro. Here, here, Pedro. 
Don't take on so. Stop that racket. What's the matter with him, George? He acts like he's afraid of something. Look, the King Cobra's out. No, it can't be. The cage is locked. Turn around and look, man. That isn't a hose crawling out of that cage door. Oh, we've got to stop him. Twelve long feet of danger slithers slowly out of its cage. King Cobra, deadliest of all poisonous reptiles. Quick as greased lightning, cunning as a fox and ruthless. For a frightening moment, the two men stand paralyzed with awe as the killer moves soundlessly out of the cage onto the service floor. Suddenly, the director springs into action. George, throw the door locks. Make sure nobody's in the building. Right Not away, Chief. The sticks are behind the door. Get out of here, Pedro, before you get killed. Let's see now. Here are the sticks, poles. Now, Mr. Cobra, we'll see if we can't talk you into going back into your cage. The building's locked, Thad. I've got a shotgun here. That's fine. Stay in back of me, George. I'll need plenty of room to maneuver this character. Let me take the risk, Thad. It's my responsibility. You just stand ready with a shotgun. If the snake gets me, then it's your job to kill him. Okay, Chief, he's all yours. I don't want to lose him unless it's absolutely necessary. He's a valuable specimen. Watch him, Chief. He sees you now. I'm watching him. And he's watching me. I'm going to try to get this... this loop around his neck before he hoods. Maybe you'll be able to get him before he suspects a scrap. Is this his eating day? Yes, he's fed. He should be rather lazy. Oh, just raise your head up now big boy, and don't hood out or your goose is cooked. Now, Thad, he isn't hooding. I've got him, George. Good work, Thad. Get a hold on his body and we'll, we'll uh, put him into the cage before I choke him to death. Right. Uh, Have you got him all in? Yes, all 12 feet. Wedge his body down with a pole so I can Take the loop off his neck. Okay, I got him. Take the loop off now. There. Release the pole and we'll slam the cage door. Now. Oh. We were very fortunate this time. That fellow's fast. Half a second more and he'd have piled right out of here again. You said it, Thad. Better go around and look at him through the glass and see if we heard him, huh? All right. Oh. And then I want to find out how that cage door got unlocked. I guess he didn't hurt himself. He seems to be all right. Yes, he's all right, George. You'd better put some sedative in his water supply to cool him down. It isn't good for him to get too excited. Okay, I'll do that, Thad. Now, one question. How'd that door get unlocked, George? Thad, I don't know. It beats me. I always check the cages carefully. You know that. George, I'm not questioning your integrity. Anybody can make a mistake. I make more of them than anybody else does. But this... Well, it's It's frightful. Just be careful, George. Do you hear? Thad, I know you think I did it. But there were others in the snake house beside me this morning. Others? Who, for instance? Well, Paul. Are you intimating that Paul left the cobra's cage door open? I don't know, Thad, but, well, I just worry about the boys making mistakes, that's all. I'm very fond of the boy. Watch him grow up from a baby to a fine lad. But I don't think he should be in the snake house, at least alone. Well, I think I'm a better judge of that than you, George. He's becoming quite a herpetologist. He won't make any mistakes, I'm sure. Anyway, I've given him specific instructions to stay away from the poisonous reptiles. Dad, I don't like having anybody in the snake house, even Paul. That is, before and after visiting hours. Well, now, let's not argue about it, George. Just be sure you give the cobra a sedative. I'll see you later. 
you doing in the snake house? I thought I told you I didn't want anybody in here before I arrived in the morning. My dad says I can come here. I just wanted to exercise my black snake. You're not going to exercise any snakes until after I get here. And I don't intend to get up at four o'clock just so I can be here before you. I suppose you know all about what happened yesterday. Yeah, my dad told me. Boy, what a close call that was. Sure must have been some job to put that cobra back into its cage, huh? It wasn't easy. We had to wrestle him around a bit. I should say, 12 feet is a lot of snake to handle. Well, I've got work to do. I can't stand here and talk all morning. Okay, George. I'll put the black snake in its cage in a little while. You remember what I said about coming in here before I do it? Paul, come here! What's the matter, George? Plenty's the matter. How did these cages get unlocked? Three of them. Three cages unlocked? How'd that happen? That's what I'm asking you, Paul. Did you unlock these cages? Of course not, George. I didn't. I tell you if I did. Well, if you didn't, all right. Just the same, I don't want you in here before I get here in the morning, and that's an order. Do you understand? Sure, George. If that's the way you want it, I'll put the black snake back and leave right now. Hey, look, Bill. Here's a king cobra. Well, the card says he's 12 feet long. <laughs> That's a lot of snake, isn't it, pal? Oh, I'll say it is. Hey, look how he moves. Very little effort, too. Boy, what a smooth operation. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. You know, the only critter that isn't afraid of a cobra is mongoose. Mongoose? <laughs> the animals call a mongoose, Stumpy. Stumpy talk about more than one. Maybe he think they come in flocks like Canadian geese. Okay, so one of them critters is called a mongoose. When you're talking about a whole bunch, you call them either mongooses or mongooses. Now, which one of them words do you use? <laughs> oh, Stumpy, are you murdering the king's English? <laughs> Take it easy, fellas. Uh, Stumpy, the plural for mongoose is mongooses. Don't let these Bill, fellas... Hey, look at the cobra. Look at him. Great Scott. He's getting out of the cage. Henry, find the keeper. Bill, right away. Stumpy. Hey, George. Grey Wolf. George. Start herding the people out of the building through the other door. And keep them quiet. I'll guard the service alley so the snake can't get out. Huh. We get people out plenty quick. Don't take any chances with that there killer, sonny. If he tries to get out, fill his head full of 45 slugs. Bill, Henry tells me the cobra's out again. Is that right? Take a look, George. Yes, it's the cobra all right, and he's hooding. That means he's feeling ornery. I'll sound the alarm and get some help. The escape alarm. It's the snake house. Oh, don't tell me another one's gotten out. Holly, Dick, John, grab shotguns and let's go. Do you think the cobra's out again, Fred? Oh, I don't know, Holly. Let's get in the car, boys, and get there as fast as we can. I wonder how many more times we'll have to put Mr. King Cobra back into his cage. I certainly hope this is the last escape he makes, Chief. Yeah, me too. That's for sure. It had better be. I... I know what you mean, Dad. But I did not leave those doors open. Moreover, Paul was here before I was here this morning again, after I'd forbidden him. I found three cages unlocked... And I told Paul I didn't want him in the snake house anymore unless I'm here. 
It's your duty and responsibility to see that the cages are all checked and locked before visitors are allowed in the building. Isn't that right? But I did that, Thad. I always make a security check before opening my doors to visitors. And when I made my routine check this morning, the cages were all locked. And I'll verify before anyone that I'm telling the truth. All right, George, let's not argue about it. But there's something mighty peculiar going on around here. I wish I could put my finger on what it is. Bill, yeah. Henry, Stumpy, yeah, Gray Wolf, yeah. let's go over to my office. I want to have a talk with you fellows. Well, it's the next morning now, and George, the keeper of the snake house, walks briskly to get about his early morning chores of caring for the reptiles. George seems to be in a happier frame of mind than he's been for several days, and he hums as he walks up the short stairs to the main doors of the building. He finds the door locked and congratulates himself that Paul is at last listening to reason. He takes out his keys, selects the right one, fits it into the lock, and opens the door. Suddenly, he stops short. Oh, the, the cobra's loose! He jumps back to escape the cobra. Oh. His feet stumble and he falls oh. while the cobra moves rapidly by. There on the concrete steps of the snake house, George lies for a moment stunned while the cobra, with hardly an effort, makes his getaway. The slithering ribbon of death moves out of the building, across the road, and vanishes into the underbrush. Then George rouses from his unconsciousness, seeking to pierce the mental fog. Oh, my head. Oh, what happened? Oh, I fell. The cobra. The door's open. The cobra's gone. Hello, gate one. This is gate one, chief. We're closing the gates now. Good. Break out your rifles and stand by. The alarm means that whatever's escaped is now out of the building and onto the grounds. Don't let anybody in. Gate two. Gate two. This is Thad Pearson. You get that alarm? Yeah, Chief. We've got the gates locked and the rifle's broken out. Good. I'm going to the snake house. Howie, call the rangers and the sheriff's men. If that cobra's escaped out of the building, we're going to need help. Right away, Chief. How's the head feeling now, George? Mighty tender where I struck it on the stair rail, Bill. That concrete's awfully hard. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. You better stay here while we track the snake. Uh, Thad, uh, how much of a start does the cobra have on us? Oh, about an hour and a half, Bill. Mm, not so good. He could get plenty far by this time, especially if he kept in high gear. How about a mongoose, Thad? You have any here? No, Bill, we don't have a mongoose. The zoo at Silver City has one, though. Mm, that's 50 miles. Thad, would you take my car and get that mongoose? All right, Bill, I'll make it as quickly as I can. This thing gives me the creeps, Bill. Any second I expect to see the cobra's head pop up under my nose. It could happen that way, pal. You just stay behind me and keep your shotgun ready. Ah, uh, snake leaves plenty good trail in ground. It's good for us there not be rain for many days now. Dust help make snake trail easy to find. Now that there cobra fella weren't much interested in covering his trail. All he cared about was getting for the far away places. That's right, old timer. I'd say offhand that the faraway place could be that barn over on the other side of the road. Yeah, hey, I think you're right, Bill. The trail's heading straight for the road. Yep. Sure as I'm a foot high, that there reptile's in that barn. We go in barn after Cobra and 
kill him? No, Grey Wolf. Let's let the mongoose do that trick. We wouldn't stand a chance against that killer if he caught us off guard. But a mongoose isn't made for that kind of work. <laughs> you said it, sonny. Only one thing faster than a cobra, and that's a mongoose. Only one thing faster than a mongoose, and that's grease lightning. You fellas keep circling the barn to make sure the cobra stays inside. I'll send the sheriff and his boys over to help you keep him in the barn. Well, where are you going, Bill? Back to the snake house to make sure everything's all right. You never met Pedro before, have you, Bill? No, I haven't, George. <laughs> Talk to the man, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's quite a guy, isn't he? How are you feeling after your fall, Jordan? Well, that goose egg on my head's gone down to a pigeon size by now. I'll be all right. <laughs> Good. Well, i got to be getting back now. I've got the cobra trapped in an old barn on the other side of the highway. Uh, by the way, George, see that the locks and all the doors are set, will you? For a while, I don't think it's enough just to have the latch on. Okay, Bill. Will do. See you later, George. Paul. Your dad back yet? He just drove up, Bill. Here he comes now. He's got the mongoose in a cage. We're all set, Bill. All we've got to do now is get on the scene and open the cage. The mongoose will do the rest. Fine. I'll have the squad cars brought up. So their spotlights can be used to light up the inside of the barn. Good idea. Now remember, I don't want the mongoose to kill our cobra. I just want him to tire him out. Then we'll step in and stop the fight. I've got the equipment for it with me. Okay. I'll get the cars in position, then we can get started. Hurriedly, the way is prepared for the duel between two mortal enemies, King Cobra and Mongoose. Bill turns the spotlight on to illuminate the inside of the barn by beaming the lights through the large center door. Then Thad and Bill walk toward the barn. Thad is ready to release the mongoose in an instant. Bill's ready with his shotgun in case the cobra attacks before they're ready. The mongoose becomes frantic with excitement. He's got scent of the cobra, Bill. Good. Let him go, Thad. Oh, look at him go for the barn. Hey, stop dead. No wonder. Look where that big snake is, just inside the door. Boy, it's a good thing we didn't try to go in after him. He'd have nailed one of us for sure. Look, the battle's on. This'll be short. The cobra's on unfamiliar ground. He can't put up a good fight. Did you see that? The cobra missed the little animal only by a fraction of an inch. That's the way he fights. Close range, a hair's breadth distance. Boy, with perfect coordination. Wow! The mongoose raked the cobra's neck that time with his teeth. Boy, how that little fella can weave and dodge back and forth, back and forth, back and... Hey, there, he's teasing the snake. The cobra got him. No, he didn't. He just missed the mongoose by hair again. Ah, the cobra's getting woozy, Bill. He must have struck at the mongoose about two dozen times by now. I'll get him when you give the word, Thad. Well, my main concern is that the mongoose doesn't close in for the fatal bite. You mean where he grabs the snake by the back of the head and, and breaks the cobra's neck? Well, that's it, Henry. I think we'd better close in now, Thad. Snake's getting pretty tired. Yes. Let's take both of them. Come on. Now. Okay. Watch it. Take it easy. Watch it. Watch it. There we go. Come on. Come on. There. There we are. There we are. There we go. We've got both of them caged and ready to go back. Thanks to you, Bill. And to Stumpy Gray Wolf and Henry. That's all right, Thad. Say, uh, would you be interested in finding out who's been unlocking the cages in the snake house? Would I be interested? I should say so. Who is it? Yeah, who is it? Well, I'd rather it was demonstrated to you, just who it is, than tell you. Let's all go over to the snake house, shall we? (laughs) 
Quiet, Pedro. Uh, George, let me have your keys, will you? I want to try an experiment. Sure, Bill. Here you are. Thanks. Now, how in the world is using them keys going to show who let the cage doors open? Well, quiet, Stumpy. Let Bill finish what he started. What are you going to do now, Bill? Yeah, that's a good question. My curiosity is sticking out a mile. Okay, Pedro. Uh, you can go along if you want. Now, fellas, just watch as I go along and check the locks on the cage doors. Uh-oh, there's one on the bottom I didn't check. Hey, Bill, look above you. Pedro's opening the cage door. There, my friends, is your mysterious cage opener sitting right on my shoulder. Pedro. But how in the world did you discover that, Bill? Well, Thad, in watching George opening the cages, I noticed each time how intently interested Pedro was and the way George was handling the latches on the doors. Of course, we all know the disconcerting habit monkeys have in mimicking human beings. So I got an idea and thought I'd test it out. And as you see, it worked. <laughs> well, that throws me for a loop. George, well, please accept my sincere apologies for ever questioning your integrity. Oh, that's all right, Chief. You're not the only one at fault. Paul. Yeah? Uh, I want to tell you how sorry I am for misjudging you. Will you forgive a crabby old man like me? Oh, there. There, lad. There. I mean, look, they're hugging each other. I guess this thing had us all on attention. But thanks to you, Bill, and to your rangers, the mess is straightened out. Oh, it's all in the day's work, Thad. Uh, by the way, what are you going to do with Pedro now that his monkey shines have been exposed? <laughs> Maybe we'd better put him over on Monkey Island and retire him for the rest of his natural life. <laughs> hey, Thad, just think what would have happened if he'd opened the cages in the lion house. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Paul. Only I don't know that a cobra is any less dangerous than a lion. But at least he's not so loud. However, I'm sure glad that neither George or Paul were guilty of opening up those cage doors. Aren't you? We'll see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! Hey, fellas and gals, Ranger Bill again, stepping in here for less than a minute to invite all of you out there to another half hour of adventure next week at this special spot on your radio dial. We've gathered a pile of stories for you with mystery and adventure and all kinds of excitement, and we don't want you to miss a single one. So next time, call up your friends or get together with them and join all of us rangers for a session of fighting forest fires, grappling with grizzly bears, or just plain trying to help somebody out. We're sure you'll enjoy the story, and you might just learn something that'll be of real help to you in later life. So, next week, be sure to listen. <laughs>